Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. The Gambler is a 1974 American crime drama film that was written by James Toback, and it was directed by Carol Rice. The movie stars James Caan, Paul Servino, and Lauren Hutton. The storyline goes that an English professor named Axel Freed is a gambling addict. Although he loves to win, it is only secondary to the excitement that he feels in the possibility of losing. With this mentality of thinking, he ends up $44,000 in the hole in one fell swoop. He doesn't have the money to pay it back, and those to whom he owes it wouldn't take kindly at all to a delayed payment without some sort of retribution. He gets an up-close and personal view of the nasty things that can be done as a consequence as he tries to come up with the money through legitimate and not-so-legitimate sources, which include his wealthy businessman grandfather, who's had a fair share of dealings with the wrong side of the law himself, and from his physician mother. Both of these people really close to him could still be affected by his actions, whether they can or can't, or will or won't, help him. Even if he can get the money, the feeling of his addiction may not allow him to just pay it back, regardless of the consequence of being potentially deeper in with those that he owes. The other person involved in his life is his girlfriend, Billy, who loves him dearly, but didn't sign up for this kind of excitement. The film was the first produced screenplay by James Toback. Toback himself had worked as an English lecturer at the City College of New York, and at the same time, he had a gambling problem going on. He originally wrote The Gambler as a semi-autobiographical novel, but halfway through, he started envisioning it as a film, and he turned it into a screenplay. He completed it in 1972, and he showed it to a friend of his, who went on to introduce him to Robert De Niro. He became really enthusiastic about the possibility of De Niro playing this lead role. Once the script started getting developed by the studios, Carol Rice was attached as the director, and he didn't want anything to do with De Niro in that role, and he went ahead and cast James Caan instead. Toback later said that Khan became a great Axel Freed, although he was obviously a different character than the one that De Niro would have created. At the time that filming was going on, the lead actor James Khan was battling his own addiction, and that wasn't to gambling, it was to cocaine. Khan really loved this film, and he considered it one of the favorites that he's ever done. He states that the reason is that it's really not easy to make people care about a guy who steals from his mother to pay his gambling debts. Robert Evans had been really keen to produce this film from the start, as it would be his first credited production at Paramount Pictures. But Erwin Winkler wouldn't bow out of the film, despite attempts by the studio to give him other projects. Evans then went on to make the spectacular movie, Chinatown, instead. This movie is one of a few gambling addiction films that was made during the 1970s. Also included was George Stevens' The Only Game in Town and Robert Altman's California Split, as well as a TV movie that starred Shirley Jones that was titled Winner Take All. It seemed to be a real popular theme during this time period. The character of Axel Freed, played by James Caan, surprisingly appears in every scene in this film. And during it, you'll catch a glimpse of quite a few actors that you'll recognize. One of them being M. Emmett Walsh. He plays a Las Vegas gambler. This is one of the first movies I remember seeing him in. 
And then there's James Woods. He plays a bank officer that gets roughed up by James Kahn's character. This is really hard to detect that it's actually him. But once you hear his voice, it's pretty easy to discern that it's him. You'll also see Vic Tabak, who went on to fame playing in the sitcom Alice. Roger Ebert, the film critic, really loved this film. He loved the way the portrait of Axel Fried's personality begins in the storyline and then develops into a story of his world and then pays off as a thriller. It makes us feel that we're completely absorbed into Axel's problems and dangers. This character is not simply a gambler. He's a more complicated man than this. The possibility of losing, in his words, gets his juice going. He needs to lose. He needs to feel the risk to place himself in danger. Because in a way, it isn't the gambling that's his obsession. It's the danger itself. Now, Lauren Hutton plays his girlfriend. She was born Mary Lawrence Hutton in November of 1943. And she's an American model that went on to become an actress. Initially, when she tried to break into modeling with her beauty, she was dismissed by the agents because of the large gap in her front teeth. This went on to be her signature, and eventually she signed a modeling contract with Revlon in 1973, which was at the time the biggest contract in the history of the modeling industry. Over her career, she has worked as both a model and an actress. She made her film debut in a sports drama called Paper Lion in 1968. This was opposite Alan Alda. Then she showed up in this film in 1974 and was a big hit in 1980 with American Gigolo. She later went on to appear in television network series such as Paper Dolls, and Nip Tuck. Six decades into her modeling and film career, Lauren Hutton is still as stunning as ever. This 78-year-old star graced the cover of Harper's Bazaar in May of 2022, posing with her shirt removed and her hands cupped over her chest. She goes on in additional photos inside the magazine, to show her remarkable beauty at this age. She states that she's still happy to be modeling at this age, but feels it's very embarrassing to pose for the camera nowadays. She feels strange, more self-conscious, because she hasn't been practicing it on a daily basis. Take a look back at this pretty good movie. I think you'll enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching and we'll continue to chase the classics.